All right, last, last demo, we created a rough animatic of our storyboard just to go through the basic tools for animating within PhotoP using GIF Maker and within Photoshop using the timeline window. We've set up two I almost identical Photoshop files, one that's called Assets, and Assets has all of the different layers that create the keyframes we're gonna use. So I have background plates, I have some texture, I have some things that are always gonna be on, and then some things like the, the red that I might add in in certain moments of the story. I have a shadow underneath, and then I have a, a layer on top where everything's just flattened to it. The reason I have that layer on top where everything was merged is because then I copy that, I do select all, which is command A, and then command C, which is copy. All of these can be found under edit. So select all is command A under select, and then edit, command C is copy. And then I pasted it over to a new file that I call my animation stage. And this is where I'm gonna put my final keyframes. So I have both of them open. This is where you have to like really understand your organization. Now I'm going to delete the file I just merged in my assets because I already moved it over to my stage. And now I can start creating my next frame, my next animation frame. So if I look at my sketch, my plan here for telling the story and that's what we're doing today, just roughing out the animation. So I want to move the creature and I want to start hardening its surface. So this is a lot of fun to move your creature. Because we're building assets, we don't want to change layers. We want to duplicate and change layers. So first I'm going to take my creature layer and I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it. Then to move it, there's lots of ways I can move it, right? I can move it with the move tool. I can see the old one behind the new copy there. I can move it with command T and transform tools. And I can warp it a little bit, right? And have that difference from this to this. But there's actually a tool within Photoshop. It's been there for almost a decade now, which is wonderful for this. And it's called Puppet Warp. And it's specifically for something that has a skeletal structure. So what I do is I take my copy, which I will move back to being an exact copy. So Command J. And then I'm going to turn off the layer behind it and then I'm going to go to Edit, Puppet Warp. Now Puppet Warp, once you click on it, gives you like a chicken wire mesh. It's just like the Warp tool, except that you can pin certain areas so they don't move. So what I'm going to do is pin on the spine at the neck, on the pelvis where each foot touches the ground, at the front of the bill. And then what's great is you can take those pins and then you can move them. So you decide how many you need, right? So if I pin at the base of the bill, this makes it like an elephant trunk. I can warp it between those two points. So this is all to help you move your creature in a way that looks more believable than just warping them all the way out. So my tail is really flexible, so I could put a few pins on my tail. And then the hands, I can even move those a little bit. And then once I'm ready, I think I have a good pose. So this is just a subtle movement. I hit return. 
and then I can see the difference between the two. So a pretty small movement. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to take this cloud background. And if you remember, I created this cloud, command T. Let's see, which one was it? It is this one. I created it. as a panning screen. So I'm just going to move it a little bit each time. And if I use guides, I can actually measure out this movement if I want a really smooth kind of panning movement. So I'm going to do it, let's, let's say a half inch each time. So I can use my guides. I guess it's going to be one inch each time roughly that. So I can set guides at roughly even intervals so that each time I want to move the background I know how how much to move it. Now for me it's just kind of clouds moving because I didn't want too complicated a background. But this could be a whole landscape moving behind them if I wanted my creature to look like it was you know, traveling in a train or something. So I'm just doing this visually. It's just GIF animation. It doesn't need to be exactly perfect. All right. So let's say we do it like that. And so I do Command T, and I move my clouds just that far back, hit return, I keep my shadow where it is, maybe I turn these clouds on just a little bit, let's just do that at like 5%, and now I've got my next frame. So what do I do? I go to my top layer where my shadow is, if I want to I can take my shadow and just make it a little bit darker. I can have that shadow flicker probably within five percentage points. And then I'm going to hold down Option. That's the important part. Hold down Option, go up to Layer, and say Merge Visible. Without holding Option, that would lose all my assets. It would merge them all into one layer. By holding down Option, it keeps all of my assets safe while still merging it all into one layer at the top. Then I select all using Command A. Then I go to Command C to copy it all, and then a copy of that frame is on my clipboard. Then I go to my stage and I hit Command V, which is under Edit for Paste, and it will paste the next frame on. And you can see that movement from one frame to the next. Not only does the character move, but the shadow changes slightly and the background changes slightly, very slightly, but it's there. And over time, that movement's going to become clear. Good. It's a good time to save my stage. Then I go back to my assets and I delete that frame. But I can't just hit delete because that just makes it an empty frame. Instead, I have to hit Command D to deselect and then delete that whole layer. And then I duplicate my creature and I do the whole thing again. Edit Puppet Warp. Set the spine. the tail, the feet, the hands, maybe the hips. I start to move it a little bit more. I want it to start looking up, stretching out, head cocking back a little bit. Arms may be tucking in a little bit. This is why the silhouette's so important. Because if I just had an arm in the body without creating a different silhouette shape, I wouldn't be able to puppet warp it very effectively. 
You can imitate kind of breathing of the chest going in and out, in and out. And then hit return. And then you can see if that's enough of a difference. And it is. So now this is the pose of my creature. I'm going to flicker the shadow a little bit. Maybe take it just a little bit darker. For a few frames. Going to move the clouds, Command T. I actually don't even need Command T, but that shows me the transform box, which is helpful. Move it to the next place. And then I'm going to flicker this up a little bit, five more. percentage points in opacity. Now I go to my top layer, I hold down Option, I say Layer, Merge Visible with Option held down, I then hit Command. Okay, so I've put in now three frames. One, two, three, animating. For each one, you can see that the shadow changes underneath just slightly. Just a little bit of variation. The background changes just slightly, and it's actually changing in a way that's going to move consistently. So I've started the first part. These are kind of all in between frames before moving the head up and hardening the shell. Now I can start thinking, how do I want to start making it look like it's hardening? And I want to start desaturating the color of my creature. So I go back to my assets. I hit Command D to deselect. I delete that merged layer. I make a duplicate Command J of my creature. I go to Edit Puppet Warp. First, let's do all the same old things. Maybe I can simplify it. Fewer pins. Yes, this works. So I just need one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. One there. All right. I can even move a foot around if I want to, but one at a time, so it's always having its weight on one foot. So I've got the movement, I hit return. Now I want to start playing with its adjustments, its direct adjustments. So I go to image adjustments and I'm going to go immediately to a hue saturation. Let's just use that. I'm going to take the saturation down by 10 points, the master saturation. Doesn't seem like a lot, and I'm going to shift the hue. See, which way do I want to harden it? Probably towards the blue range. So I'm going to shift the hue up by, let's do 10 points. So its, it's colors are starting to change now from this to this. It's going through a subtle change. Then I want to move the clouds. You see how I'm kind of going just down through it. I'm going to flicker the shadow back down five. I'm going to move the clouds. One over. And I'm going to play with the building of the fog. And I'm going to go to the top. And I'm going to hit hold down option and say layer, merge visible. Then I'm going to do command A, then come here and command V to paste it in. What's really nice about having this stage file is I can see each frame and how it changes. So now, not only does the creature start to, not only does the creature move and start to pick up his foot or her foot, but the colors start to change on the creature too. Good time to save it. And I'm getting closer and closer to my second keyframe where its head is actually up and it's, it's starting to harden. So you get to set the pace of your own animation. Now I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. I'm going to delete that merge layer. I'm going to make a duplicate. Then I'm going to hit Edit Puppet Warp again to keep moving my creature. I set it 